what we do here is go back, 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 back. Hello and welcome back to our channel. I am going to go into really deep details on why I have these tubes in my nose. So, with that being said, I want to start off saying that I had appointments at dentist offices. Um, my daughter, myself, and my kids, we went out to a restaurant downtown. Then I worked. Um, I'm not going to give the place or the name of the place where I work because of, you know, privacy reasons. But with that being said, the last part of March, I got uh, sick. It started off as a regular cough, as if I was choking on water or something like that, but it would not stop. So I continued to work that day. Even though the cough started around lunchtime, I continued to work throughout the day, excuse me, because, you know, I didn't feel bad enough to leave work or the cough wasn't as bad to say, okay, I'm coughing on people, you know, I need to leave or um, I'm coughing so much that I'm coughing up stuff. No, it wasn't like that. It was just like little short cough to where, you know, it's just like you're choking on water. Or say you choke on some spit or something. That that's the kind of cough it was. But it was consistent. Um like I said, I wasn't hurting, I wasn't running a fever, none of that stuff. It just started with a simple cough. The next day, which was a Friday or a Saturday I believe, I was extremely sick. But I went to work, no fever none of that stuff because if I had a fever I wouldn't have been able able to go inside of the building because we had temperature checks every day so I didn't have a fever but my body hurt I felt like I was like ran over by a truck train whatever that's heavy I felt I felt all of it um I still had a cough but I just felt really bad really sore you know just like that I wasn't even coughing as much the next day. I just was hurting, um, hurting and, you know, just feeling like someone dragged me behind a bus or something. Like, I was really tired. I wasn't short of breath, none of that. The third day, which was, I think that Sunday, I was down for the count. Um, I went to my manager, talked to my manager. But what really started uh, my leave from work was two of my friends at work, they noticed that I wasn't acting the same. I clocked into work and I went and I sat down in the break room, which is something that I don't do. So, you know, one of my friends, my close working partner, he asked me, hey, you feel okay? You all right? You don't look okay. So. I had to go ahead and fess up because I was, I was really feeling like crap. Um, another lady that I work with, she also noticed the change and everything because I would come in, speak to everybody, get my stuff, cut some jokes, you know, laugh and play as I'm coming in to work. But I didn't do any of that. She asked, are you okay because you're not acting the same way? And I told her, I said, no there's something wrong and I don't feel good okay with that being said my homeboy was like oh heck no you can't stay here like this because something wrong and I can tell by the way you're acting 
My manager came over to me, asked me what was going on. I told her how I felt. She took me to HR. I was sent home right away. Um, I was sent home to get tested for COVID-19, which I did. As soon as I left work, I did exactly what they said. I went and I got tested. When I um, had the rapid test, it was negative. So I was like, well, something's not right. So I went to another testing site and I got tested there. That rapid test came back like a day or two later. That one was negative, but I continued to feel like crap. I was hurting. By that time, I was short of breath. I had fevers, everything. That, you, that was a symptom of COVID-19, I had it. So I decided to, you know, try to wait it out to see whether it would go away. I, you know, thought it was like a little short virus or something. So I um, stayed home, I quarantined myself, um, as they told me at the testing site. And while in quarantine, I felt sicker and sick. Excuse me for um, cracking, but I just, I felt really, really bad. Um, my husband came home, he tried to help me out. And during the time he was like, I think he needed to go to a doctor. So a couple of days passed by and I was like, yeah, I'll go. So I didn't go, needless to say. Um, I stayed at home in my room, trying to quarantine away from everybody. I was taking medication, Tylenol, all that stuff, try to break fever. I had all the cold rags, I had ice, everything, trying to break that fever, but it would not break at all. So it wasn't until that last day, I did check my own um, temperature that last day, and I, the highest it read that day was 103.9. That was a sign right there, okay, you need to go to the hospital, maybe ER what's going on for real I, I lie back down in bed I did not move because I was I was feeling so weak I just felt like I couldn't move it's, it's not that I did not want to go to the hospital I was just weak to the point to where you know, I just didn't feel like moving so that being said if you have an Apple watch whatever I had on mine that day when I was in bed and for some reason it kept ringing like a phone and normally you know if you feel bad you ignore calls you ignore all that good stuff so as it kept ringing that final time I was like oh crap who is this let me see what they want so I looked at the watch and the Apple watch told me to seek emergency care immediately my oxygen levels had dropped uh, below 70 so I looked at the watch and I was like okay yeah it's time for me to go to ER my husband got me up out of the bed and he helped me get dressed and had to literally almost drag me out of the house because I did not have enough strength to stand or to walk um, going up the stairs and down the stairs I mean it hurt bad I was in a whole lot of pain. I could not breathe. It, it felt like every two or three steps, I was out of breath. I had to stop. And once we got close to the emergency room, not too far from my house, he had to once again almost drag me out of the car because I did not have enough strength to stand. Got to the emergency room. I had enough strength to do the paperwork but once they called my name I went to the back they asked me maybe two or three questions and immediately put me up to oxygen because I was fading real fast so after they hooked me up onto oxygen I um, had chest x-rays all that stuff came back I had COVID pneumonia I was then, um, I waited an hour and then I was then transferred to another hospital where they had all of the COVID patients. After being transferred to that hospital, I stayed in that hospital where they had COVID patients for almost two months. And 
the majority of the time spent there, I was in ICU. Um, it didn't look too good. I was put on a ventilator. And I stayed on that ventilator up until the last two weeks before it time for me to go home. Then I was put on a regular oxygen uh, from the wall. Uh, yeah. And after being put on the oxygen from the wall, I stayed in that room, in a regular room, for maybe like two weeks. And after the two weeks, the doctor told me, he said, if you can get your oxygen levels to stabilize to where you can breathe from the wall on two liters, you can go home. I worked extremely hard to get to that two liters. Um, mind you, I could not walk. Um, I lost the ability to walk. I still had, you know, breathing tubes on. And anytime I had to go to the restroom, someone would have to come in the room with me because my heart rate would go up so high. You know, it would basically alert the whole hospital, you know, because my heart rate was at like 150, 160, sometimes higher. My blood sugar was extremely high because of all the steroids that I was on. Um, at one point, my blood sugar was almost 700 and I was taking the most insulin out of the whole floor that I was on to try to get me back down to at least 200. So, I mean, it was an extremely hard, hard journey. I'm still going through it. Um, once I got down to two liters and was able to go home, my first two weeks home, I was in so much pain from not being able to use my legs. The only thing I could do is holler, scream, and cry at night because I was in pain from my lower back down to my feet. The spasms were so bad, my husband had to keep going out and keep getting up, trying to uh, massage my legs, my ankles, and he went and he got me this spray for muscle spasms. It worked for a little while and then it stopped. And then they put me on more steroids. I stayed on those steroids up until about two weeks ago. So I'm now steroid free, thankfully. But I don't know how long this journey is gonna be for me. So I'm gonna keep praying and trusting and believing that I will be set free from these tubes and I'll be able to live a normal life and be able to go out with my family and friends once again. Um, there's more in between, but I, I don't think I can talk about it. Um, let's just say I almost wasn't here. Okay. Long story short. But I do have parents and many, many friends out there that have prayed and prayed for me so that I could come out of that hospital and to bring me back from where I was. My dad came out there, my mom came out there, and I had several family members. They came out there and they prayed for me outside of that hospital, even though they could not see me at all. And once that they told me that I could have visitors, the first person I wanted to see was my husband and my parents, because I had nobody else to just fall back on but them. I had other families and friends, you know, that that were there for me. Even when I couldn't do anything for myself, I did have other family and friends. But my mom, my dad, they were there praying for me the entire time. My church family, everybody. So I do want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for praying for me. To my friends out there, thank you so much for praying for me. I'm still here. Thank God, I'm getting better. And I hope to, you know, normal, be normal, not to say I'm not, but, you know, to live a free and normal life.